Uh, like I said, this is Vincent. My name is Estevan. We are All American Print Supply. As you may have read from the title description, today we're going to be comparing direct to garment DTF, which is direct to film printing, but we also call it dark. garment transfer. There we go. So yeah, DTF, direct to garment transfer, essentially making transfers with the direct to garment printer. And we're also going to be comparing this to a custom transfer company. But I want to talk about uh, direct to film or direct to garment transfer. We found a way to use our Epson F2100 uh, to print on our film and, and make those same transfers. Now, something that really makes the DTF or direct to garment transfer process is a lot easier is gonna be our Cathari NeoRip software. And the reason I love this program, we actually have a custom environment. For the DTF process or direct to garment transfer, we're actually gonna be inverting the way the color layers are applied. So what does that mean exactly? Yeah, so with, with the film transfers, you actually need to apply your CMYK down first and then your white on top. With Cathari, what we've done is we've actually made it an environment. So you select DTF or DTG transfers um, and it'll actually do it for you. That's right, guys. And not only that, we are proud to be a supplier of the EcoFreen line of DTF or direct-to-garment transfer products. So this is gonna include the special film that we're printing onto, yeah. as well as the hot melting powder. Uh, we already set up with the Cathari the uh, DTF environment, yeah. and we got the artwork. Yeah, well, let's take a look at my uh, table here. This is kind of the whole setup that I have right here. Um, so we do supply the papers and powders, and so the, pa uh, the powder that we carry is, it says for DTF. Um, this is a hot melting powder, guys, and there is a sign that says, please wear a mask when you use this process. So I do have my mask here today. I also have gloves as well, just to be safe. Um, and then we also carry the film. The film does come in A4 size. It does come up to 16 by 20, so it can match your largest platen. And then we do have rolls of this stuff as well. It is labeled print side, non-print side. We have a box here where we actually pour the powder in and we put our film in to make it easier to pour on top. And then we do need heat tape. Heat tape is what's gonna keep the paper uh, flat to our platen here. And so actually I'm gonna go ahead and tape our uh, paper here to our platen. And that's our platen height it should be at a P, so let's go ahead and put it all the way up. And then we're also gonna go ahead and just tape this down so it stays nice and flat. And make sure you guys do mirror your design as well, that's a big one. Vince, take it away. All right, so uh, it might be hard to see, but it looks correct on here, but if you turn it around actually, you'll see the white underbase behind it. And so it's not a huge thick white underbase. Again, our settings, we have it dialed down quite a bit, so your hand feel's gonna be great. Um, our next step, once this is done, is we're gonna go ahead and apply our heat powder um, to this design. So I have this box that I've created over here to make it easy. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down like such. And again, I am gonna wear a mask for this. Uh, our instructions do say to wear a mask just to be safe, guys. Again, this is a new product. Um, there is some certification on it, but just to be safe, let's wear our mask. What have you done so far? You just kind of sprinkled over a nice layer onto the wet transfer, correct? Yeah, I just wanna make sure that it's completely covered. And then once it's covered, guys, uh, this is the most important part. We wanna flick off all the excess powder. If there's excess powder on this sheet, it will transfer over to the shirt. So what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and just give it a nice little flick here. And our next step is to actually cure this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to our heat press. Our heat press right now is set at uh, 325 degrees. And we're gonna go ahead and let it cook for about two minutes. If you heat the lower platen for just a few seconds, we can actually cook it for less time. And so I'm gonna do it for about a minute and a half. Yeah, and I'm not actually closing the heat press on it. I'm actually just hovering it so it's cooking. Again, we just want that uh, powder to basically get cooked. You know, S, do you wanna go ahead and grab the shirt? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Let's take a look at that transfer, holy yeah. moly. So you don't wanna see that it's powdery. You almost wanna see that it looks not wet, but it looks solid. So after a brief pre-press, now we're ready to position and apply our transfer. So that's done. That was fast. Yeah, it's 10 seconds. So we do need to let this cool down, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. Um, and S, if you wanna get started with uh, DTG, and then once this is cool, we'll peel it off. Okay, absolutely. Uh, custom transfers are awesome. I mean, basically, as long as you have a heat press, you are now a professional printer. We'll take your artwork, prepare the transfer for you, send that to you, and then you're ready to start producing with, like I said, nothing more than a heat press. Many of these guys are gonna have, you know, minimum quantities that need to be purchased. There's gonna be lead times involved. And then my concern will probably be, I guess, washability and hand feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and position my transfer where I want to apply it. I think this looks like a nice pocket logo here. Now this particular company is advising a temperature to apply at of 320 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna be pressing this for between 10 to 15 seconds. And we're using a medium pressure. Let's go ahead and apply this on here and we'll see exactly how this comes out. Now, this is also gonna be a cold peel as well. It looked pretty much like DTF. 
So I'm not sure if there's companies out there who are utilizing this method or supply items like what Vincent showed us today, but after kind of reviewing that transfer, I feel like you guys could make these yourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy cool off with my DTF transfer that I made. All right, so let's pre-treat this garment. So I've got round trip selected. I've got my fastest speed available, which is a level five. I've pulled the machine where I wanna pre-treat. So now we're gonna go ahead and send the spray. So we're gonna go ahead and place this protective cover over the wet pre-treat and go ahead and close this down. And again, I'm also using medium pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit print. We're gonna send the job. Let me go grab my pre-treated t-shirt. As you recall from the DTF process, we had this set a little normal setting than we would an uh, actual print. I ran this at a level P, which is the highest setting, and that's really only where I'd be doing either a nozzle check or printing these direct-to-garment transfers. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lower this down to a 1.5. I'm releasing my lever here. I'm turning my adjustable knob to the right. Got this now dropped to a 1.5, ready to throw the garment on. This has already been pre-treated. And again, uh, today I use my Firebird GTX Optimize, which is also known as Gen 2.5. Now it's time to throw the hoop on. Now this is gonna lock my garment into place as the printer feeds the platen in for the white underbase and then back out for the color. Now, I believe my transfers from the custom transfer company as well as the DTF or direct to garment transfer that we prepared should be nice and cooled down. I mean, you saw how easy that was to apply. We're gonna see how the quality matches up as soon as we're done drying here. Do a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, the great thing is, I don't really feel there's gonna be a right or wrong answer. These are all gonna be ideal for different people at different stages of their business. And I think they can all be beneficial no matter where we are. It's just finding what place in your verticals, in your setup, we're gonna be able to take the most advantage of this. So we got our white underbase printing flawlessly, meaning I did a great job pre-treating. Good job, Esteban. And then we'll go ahead and get this dried up. We're gonna compare them side by side. Um, now some of the benefits of direct to garment, I would say you're gonna be able to enjoy on-demand, high quality feel printing, a uh, great fast turnaround. I mean, there's no setup. We're not burning screens. We're not coating screens. We're not doing this for each individual color. And you're gonna be able, like I said, to have a tremendously fast turnaround speed. Uh, I'd say maybe one of the cons of direct to garment, there is a degree of a learning curve, especially in our preparatory stages. I mean, the pre-treat is crucial. I would say possibly one of the most important parts of DTG. So for some folks, really dialing that in, getting that to a system. I mean, it is very doable, but the learning curve of that, I would say is probably one of the only things to keep in mind. You know, it is a process, but it is a formula. A plus B equals C. So there's not a lot of variables, not a lot of guesswork. And when you're pairing a solid printer, like America's number one selling DTG, the Epson SureColor F2100 with a compatible automated pre-treat machine. All right, so there we go. So you already know that once the print comes out of the DTG, this is wet or active. We gotta get this guy cured up. You guys saw right now, I just made this right in front of you. It's that easy. You guys can do this. If you're watching this, you're probably already doing it. So again, we're just trying to show different options, comparing, showing some of the benefits and some of the cons of these different processes. And if you missed the intro, the name of the show today is DTG comparing and contrasting against the custom transfers. You saw the direct to film. We prepared that in house ourselves using our printer. And then we saw that custom transfer company, which kind of looked a lot like DTF, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, awesome. That was quick and easy. We did the whole thing start to finish right there. You guys saw how quick that was. All right, so let's uh, start peeling some transfers and comparing these images. So, First one I wanna take a look at is gonna be our DTF, or direct to garment transfer. And this is a cold peel. So we've been given this a chance to return back to normal room temperature, and let's peel it. Oh my gosh. That was seamless. There was no tugging, no fighting, no pulling. At no point did I feel I was at risk of removing some of that transfer. Hand feel is actually nice. It's very soft. It does not feel like a sheet of paper at all. That is stretchability. This is very, very stretchy. No cracking, no breaking whatsoever. All the detail, and like I said, the hand feel. So what's nice about this is I did not have to pre-treat. The versatility to apply DTF onto almost any fabric or textile without any kind of pre-treat step, 
full color, high resolution, high detail, and tremendous hand feel. This is very, very thin. All right, now let's take a look at the custom transfer company. They're gonna take your artwork, prepare it onto transfers, and then you can really start making your own small business, distributing your own designs. So it's a great way to kind of dive into the industry without investing in all the equipment. So let's see how this peels. All right, so initially, I'm already feeling a little bit of resistance as it's trying to be removed from the page. Let's see how this looks final product. So you guys can see here, before I remove this, I'm actually just gonna bring this over. It's holding on there. It's holding on to the garment. So a little more, it's starting to come off nice now like a sticker. I do see what appears to be trace elements of my design, kind of around some of these edges. So this is what I prepared right now, right in front of you guys in minutes. As we can see, there is no traces of any of that ink. And let's check out stretchability. The hand feels not bad. It is a little thicker. It does have more of a kind of slightly a paper feel, but stretchability looks good. You know, if I did not have a direct to garment printer, if I did not have access to these type of equipments, I think this would be a great way for, like I said, to jump into the business, get producing, start moving product with nothing more than a heat press. Now I have my DTG print. So immediately I do feel a high-end kind of quality water-based ink appearance and hand feel. Stretchability, I know this is gonna be pretty good. Let's go ahead. That's not bad. No cracking, no separation. Again, wasn't really trying to find a winner and a loser, but I wanted to kind of compare, contrast, show you guys some of these different resources that are out there. Hit the red subscribe button, tap the post notification bell so you can always be the first to know whenever we have new information out. We're adding videos weekly. We're gonna be going back into trade show season. So we're gonna have a lot of fun content and useful information on the printers, on the software, on the products. So and once again, it's aprintsupplyco on youtube.com. But I think that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys so much for attending DTG versus custom transfers. It's gonna be the direct to garment transfer process or DTF. And then also the custom transfer companies that are out there and then the DTG process itself. Had a great time sharing this with everybody today. I hope you guys got some good information. My name is Estevan. We are All American Print Supply. We'll see you on the next one.